Hey guys, it's Dan from Mr. Grey's Gaming, and I'm back with another memory lane video about my consoles and my gaming experience growing up. Um, this one, I'm sure it says it in the title somewhere, is, <laughs> is about the Sega Mega Drive, the Sega Genesis of the pond, but we knew it as the Sega Mega Drive. Hey you, NASA, give me the Cyber Razor Cat. Cyber Razor Cat. Yeah! <laughs> I remember when my um, I had a master system. I still got it. Well, a different one, but I had a master system. Uh, I think that I had that. It must have been in '89, something like that. '88 or '89. I can't remember now. Or maybe '90. No, '89. And then for you know, not not too long after that. Um, reading the Mean Machines magazines, you know, always Mean Machines, they announced the Mega Drive. Or oh, the Mega Drive was already, I can't remember now. It's a bit hazy. This was like, like I said, late 80s on the cusp of 90s, right? So I remember looking at the, you know, the Mega Drive, it was 16 bit. At that time, I didn't even know what bits were, right? <laughs> That's all I, I knew was reading from the magazines that. The games they looked like they were in the arcades because back then in the arcades, you know, there was no, there was no 3D gaming back then. It was all 16-bit platformers, um, fighting games, and stuff like that, basically. So when the Mega Drive, when I saw the Mega Drive, I, I thought I, I want one. I need one, and I genuinely, and I, I, I'm not kidding you, I still remember a dream I had. when I was a kid when I only had a Master System and no one else I knew had a Mega Drive, by the way. And I dreamt about the Mega Drive. I dreamt about waking up and having one. <laughs> we all lead such simple lives as kids. But, um, so yeah, uh, I, I wanted a Mega Drive. Now, I, ca I can't remember, like I said, I can't remember exactly when I had one. But I know my mother and her partner at the time saved up, right? Because... I, I didn't come from exactly a rich family. Well, I didn't come from a rich family at all. <laughs> Not even a well-off family. Yeah, I remember um, I was walking with my mother and we passed the charity shop, second-hand shop, and there was a, me a boxed Mega Drive in the window and I remember the price, it was £180. Now, I, I knew my mother couldn't afford that. <coughs> and, like, uh, t I think it was two or three years before my father had bought me the Sega Master System. So I wasn't going to ask him for that. But anyway, I, I didn't say to my mother, Mom, I want that. Or like, can you buy me that? I, I probably said, oh, I really want one of those, like, you know, one day or something. <laughs> you know, the golden ticket. But then Christmas came along and they had bought me that exact one. So mine wasn't brand new. It was from a charity shop. And like I said, um, it hadn't, at the time I had that, it hadn't been out long at all. A couple of months or so, whoever, whoever bought that either didn't like it or they wanted the Super Nintendo or something, I don't know. But I was chuffed to bits to open that, um, rip the Christmas wrapping off. I think it, it must have been 1990, maybe 91. I can't remember, I was 10 or 11 years old. So I ripped, ripped to shreds because I saw the size of the box and I thought, I wonder if that's a Mega Drive. And lo and behold, it was. <laughs> Unfortunately, this isn't my original Mega Drive. Uh, it's, it went years ago and I, I, I can't remember what I did with it. I don't know if I sold it, I don't know if it broke or something, because like, like I keep saying, you know, as a kid, especially in the early 90s, although I loved this, it wasn't something I thought, oh, this could be worth something in the future. It's not something most of us probably uh, thought. So my this is not my original one, but I I acquired this a few years back. If you look, there's one of my videos, videos back somewhere where this is the one where I peeled all, took me hours to get all the stickers someone had put on a football sticker shit. But um, yeah, so I, I finally had a Mega Drive, a Sega Mega Drive. In fact, I remember being in school before I had this. Like I said, I was obsessed with getting a Mega Drive. Before I had this, 
Um, I remember it was in, I think it was in our class in school where we had to draw our, our favourite things. And I drew a Mega Drive. I didn't draw it for like 3D, I just drew the top. I drew, you know, that, the 16 bit from what, and I, and I didn't own one, it's just what I remembered from <laughs> Mean Machines magazine. And I drew it, I was so chuffed, I was so chuffed of my drawing of the Mega Drive. And then when I got one, I, I couldn't believe my luck. Like I said, I didn't care if it was second hand. I, at the time, you know, I didn't exactly know it was second hand. I just thought, I wonder if that's the one from that charity shop we saw like a few weeks back. But, but yeah, as soon as I got a Mega Drive, I thought, yes, this is it. It can't get better than this. <laughs> I think it's what everyone thinks when they get a brand new console. Even today, it can't get better than this. But um, yeah, so I got the Mega Drive. And I, I'm trying, I, th I think, although I don't have it anymore. I've got the Master System version, but I don't have this one anymore. Sonic came with it. Yeah, because I remember on the box it had Sonic on it and I had Sonic the Hedgehog. Now, I'd played Sonic before on the Master System, so I knew what to expect from that. It wasn't new, but... Obviously, it's a hell of a change from the uh, 8-bit Master System version to the 16-bit Master System version. And I played it to death. Still one of my favourite Sonic games, by the way. I like Sonic 2, but I thought Sonic 1 was better. But I played that game to death, and even my brother, who's 10 years older than me, played it to death as well. And <laughs> I can't remember if it was my brother or someone in school once told me. And this, this affected my gaming of Sonic for a good couple of years told me that you know, the shield, when, when you collect the shield in Sonic the Hedgehog and this, um, the bubble goes around and it's like flashing. At the time, in the early 90s, there was this fear of epileptic warnings. On the video games you get epileptic warnings, flashing flashing lights or what have you. And I was, I was obsessed with epileptic warnings. If I saw one, I was like, oh my god, I'm going to have an epileptic fit. Never did. But it was either my older brother or... Someone in school had told me, if you look at that bubble on Sonic for too long, you're going to have an epileptic fit. <laughs> and somewhere I read, I don't know what the hell I get my info from when I was a kid, I read somewhere that if you close one eye, you're fine. <laughs> so there was a brief time where I played Sonic the Hedgehog like that. Every time I get a shield, I would close one eye and I'd play it until that shield goes. Like I said, kids are stupid, right? <laughs> so yeah, I had Sonic the Hedgehog. And I got some games I'm gonna show you now. But um, I'm trying to think what other games I had. The, the ones which came with other Mega Drives, this didn't come with my Mega Drive. But I loved it when I had it. Mega Games 1. Super Hang On, World Cup Italia 90, brilliant. And Columns, Columns! I still listen to this soundtrack now and then. I love it. But yeah, that, um, that held my gaming um, interest on the Mega Drive for a long, long time, this Mega, mega Games. But um, I'll go through the other games now. But there was um, a, a, a time where me and my mate Paul, we'd rent games on the Diamond Video in Cherokee. Um, I think at the time, it, they'd only just, they were obviously VHS videotapes, it was a video store which I'm no longer about, but at the time, they only newly started renting uh, video games out. And it's primarily Mega Drive. I can't remember if it was Master System or Super Nintendo. I think it was only Mega Drive games, I don't know why. But, um, so every couple of weeks we would go up there, I think, I can't remember exactly how, how much it was. Might have been two pound to rent for three days, or maybe three pound, I can't remember. But we would rent games, play them over the weekends, and then obviously take them back. But there was a couple of times, <laughs> I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, but um, obviously I went, to, I was in school with my mate Paul, and there was a few times where we'd rent the game on a Saturday, play a bit on a Saturday, and then come Monday, 
see, I'm going to give a bit away now about my mate Paul. <laughs> I hope he doesn't mind. But come Monday, I I lived a few streets away from him. And, you know, on the way to school, I'd call his house. I'd always call his house in the morning for school because we'd walk, I think, it was like a mile to school. But sometimes, if we thought, right, we, we really want to play this game, and we knew <laughs> that about half eight, his parents would go to work and they wouldn't be back till I think it's something like six in the afternoon. So I call him, we'd walk so far. <laughs> then we'd re know like, oh look, it's uh, gone off eight. Your parents have gone to work. Just bunk off school. <laughs> so we'd walk all the way back to his house. Um, I can't remember how we got away with like phoning in sick. I, well, actually, we didn't. We didn't have mobile phones then, so we couldn't phone in sick to uh, school. So I think we just made up some excuse the next day. We didn't do it all the time, but there were a couple of days here and there where we did. You know, every few weeks we'd bunk off school to play video games on the Mega Drive. And I'll never forget. Um, there's two games, and one of them I actually got for you, and the other one I got on the Master System actually. But there was two games I remember we we rented. And we re-rented over and over again because we were obsessed with them. One was Global Gladiators. That was one of them, Global Gladiators. If you look back, it was, it was a quite a cool platformer. And clearly sponsored by McDonald's, but um, yeah, we, we played that game for hours upon hours because I remember seeing in the magazines, uh, the Mean Machines mags, and they were raving about it. I don't know if they were paid, I'm sure, well, I'm fairly sure they were paid by McDonald's to say all those great things. It was a good game, you know, it wasn't a crap game, but it was clearly product placement. Back at the time when I didn't have a clue what product placement was, so I didn't care. I saw McDonald's, beef burgers, and uh, fries and whatever, we didn't care. So, yeah, so we played that game for, to death. And then, now this game, we rented this, and this is my original copy. Not the rented one, King's Bounty is my original copy I bought not long after we rented this or like, yeah, not, not, not that long, King's Bounty. An extremely, we, we must have played this, we didn't bunk all the time for this mind, we did a few times to play this game, but we must have played this game uh, weeks upon weeks, months upon months, eight hours a day. If you look this game up, it looks like the worst, most basic game you've ever seen with music, which it loops. It's looping music and it's the same music through the entire game. There's two tracks. It's, no, sorry. There's only three tracks on the entire game, which loops. And once you listen to it, it's in your head constantly. I can even hum it right now, which I'm going to. Dun, 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 I'll never forget that music because it was ingrained in our brains for all eternity from playing this game in his house. Probably not in school. And we just played it to death. It's, a, it's basically, um, uh, what can I say? It's you move hits, you, he, they move hits. It's, it's basically a Final Fantasy game before Final Fantasy. Well, I don't know if this came out before, but it's an excellent game. I recommend this to anyone. I still love this game, even though it's basic as shit. And I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? <laughs> the bite marks. That's not me. I had a dog called Jay, who's no lo sadly long, no longer with us. But that's how that, that happened. <laughs> <laughs> this is my original case, but excellent game. I'll recommend this to anyone. And so yeah, we you know we played the Mega Drive constantly, and and like I said, as far as I remember, 
Me and my mate Paul and this one other kid who I can't remember his name, we're the only ones in our area, or well, oh, well, we knew of, had a Sega Mega Drive. And so there wasn't many people to borrow games off. Like I said, we'd rent them, we occasionally bought them, I can't remember where we bought them from at the time. There was no like game or ga um, game station was, wasn't around back then, well not as far as I can remember. Uh, in fact it was... What's it called? There was a game store in Cardiff in the closest city to me and I can't remember what it's called. It turned, years later it turned into Zavi. Oh, Virgin Megastore. There you go. Yeah, Virgin Shop. So that's where we used to get our video games, you know, if we wanted to buy them. Yeah, so he had, I don't know if he still got this. I, th I think I asked him this a while back. He had, um, the arcade stick, Sega Mega Drive arcade stick. And there was a few versions out, but the one he had was metal. It was awesome. And we, we used to play, um, I think the best game to play that on, because he had an auto fire on it, was Terminator 2. The, the, another one with a cursor going across the screen. You could have two player, shooting all the sideboards coming towards the screen and stuff. His arcade stick was the best for that. <laughs> Simply because of the auto, um, auto fire. And obviously you had Robocop vs Terminator, which I, which I wish I had right now. And then you had this. Alien 3. Not only an excellent film, director's cut, but this game, when was it? 92, so if I had this when it first came out, which I think I did, I was 12 years old. And I didn't tell my mates this, but there was parts of this game scared the shit out of me. <laughs> it scared the crap out of me. But yeah, it's the soundtrack, I still listen to this, I love it. In fact, I got the soundtrack on my phone, I listen to it in the gym now and then. It's, it's an excellent game. It's, the only thing this has to do with the film, is the settings and Sigourney Weaver's got a bald head, that's it, because his weapons in this is... you got all the weapons from the Aliens film, like the pulse rifle, uh, flamethrower, grenade launcher. Obviously none of those were in the film of Alien 3, but it doesn't take it away from it being an excellent game. Hard game, by the way, because every level is timed. You have, to, you have to save prisoners. It was hard as hell. But I still love this. This isn't my original copy. I bought this six or seven months ago, I think, because I just want it again. And like I, I keep saying, I know I can emulate and I'm nothing against emulating, but there's certain games, and like I said, certain games, certain consoles, I just want physically. And that's, that's one of the best conditions Mega Drive games I've ever seen, by the way. But yeah, the great thing about this console, it had, and I, can't, I don't think the Super Nintendo had this, and I did actually use this, it was the um, headphone jack. Headphone jack, look at that. I can't remember any other console having that at the time. I could be wrong. I don't know. But yeah, it had the headphone jack. It had, like, a, I didn't know this as a kid. I just thought it was an awesome console. It had blast processing. It was superior in some games compared to the Super Nintendo. It had, um, it had the third-party developers behind the, on the Mega Drive because. There's a lot of games, and if you, you'll you see the differences in, I'll put a link in the description to Console Wars guys, they do like comparisons between Super Nintendo and uh, Sega Mega Drive. Aladdin, for example, Aladdin was spot on, it was, it was made by Disney, not by Disney, but you know, it was sponsored by Disney. Um, and it looked like the, car, uh, the film on the Mega Drive, but when you look at the Super Nintendo version, it looked nothing like the film didn't even have a sword but it was games like that which on the Mega Drive they looked better if you, if you ask my personal opinion they looked better not all games but they looked better on the Mega Drive and obviously uh, I think it was about two or three years later the Sega Mega CD Sega Mega CD the Mega CD came out which I got right there and you could fit it into the slot there which I, I don't know where the cover is but yeah like I said um, a couple of the mates a couple of my mates had the Super Nintendo, which I used to enjoy playing, but I was always a Sega Mega Drive guy. And even down the line, I would, well, even now, I'm still a Sega Mega Drive guy. And I did used to have a Super Nintendo. I sold it. 
a couple of years back, so I intend to get another one, which I love the console because um, there was games like Street Fighter 2 was better on Super Nintendo, uh, the Turtles games are better, and stuff like that. But I, I always loved my Sega Mega Drive, um, EA Rugby. I forgot about that. I completely forgot I had these other games. <laughs> what an idiot. But yeah, you had games like EA Rugby, uh, World Cup 95, which... If you're not a fan of the rugby games, this, you should play this, or if you did play this, this was the definitive rugby game back in the day, because obviously, with FIFA, <laughs> FIFA 95 was better than FIFA, FIFA 96, if I remember. If there was any difference, I can't remember. But yeah, EA Rugby, uh, played this to death, loved it. One of the best two-player games on the Sega Mega Drive. Excellent game. FIFA 96, like I said, I can't remember if this was better or not than FIFA 95. It was 95 we used to play. Uh, this was when EA was good, obviously, and when FIFA was good before... I don't even know how many FIFAs are out right now. 30-odd, 40-odd, I had no idea. And then, of course, you had Mortal Kombat 2. Again, the superior version on the Sega Mega Drive. The Super Nintendo version, I don't think it had blood. I could be thinking of the first game, but again, um, Console Wars will have, have this covered. But yeah, this, this game, when this first came out, I didn't play this in the arcades. I played the first Mortal Kombat in the arcades, and then I played it on the Mega Drive, I think it was about a year or two later. But this one, I never played on the arcades. In fact, when this came out, I didn't even know it was on the arcades. So this was my definitive version of Mortal Kombat 2. And I remember trying to, I, like, in the main machine nights, you'd occasionally get, well, in fact, you'd always get, like, at the back of the magazines, um, cheats. Or not, not so much cheats, but, like, um, moves for games like Mortal Kombat 2. So sometimes you, you wouldn't get them all mine. They'd be sneaky mini machines. They wouldn't give you all the moves. They'd give you a select few moves. So then other moves like fatalities, for example, you'd have to find out for yourself or do them by accident or ask ask your mates in school. And you know there was <laughs> it was always rumors of oh no you should do it this way. You go you go you go put the pads of a half circle with a A and B and like most of it was bullshit. But some of them did work. But yeah, at the time, this was the most brutal game I played. Because you had Kung Lao with his razor hat, you cut him in half. That was brutal. <laughs> you had Baraka who would basically dice him up with his uh, knives, his Logan knives. You would have Sub-Zero, he still ripped his head off, uh, ripped his heads with the spine off in this game. Kung Lao turned into a drag. I, I could never get that move to work. Turning, uh, not Kung Lao, sorry, what's his name? Liu Kang! Liu Kang, that's him. He had, a, he had a move where he turned into a massive dragon and flamed them. I could never do that move. Um, I always liked going Sub-Zero in this game because it was so easy to do his ice move. <laughs> his, you know, his ice adouken. But yeah, and also as well, another game. Another seriously hard game, almost impo not an impossible game. But it's so bloody hard and I can't remember if I've ever completed this. And I play. I think I played this recently. Oh yeah, on my JXD. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I played it on my JXD, and I still can't do it. I still, all this, all these years later, I can't do this bloody game. Great game though. But yeah, I think that's pretty much my best memories of the Mega Drive. There was another magazine we used to get as well. Me and my bit Paul. <coughs> it was called Mega Mag. I think it was called Mega Mag. Mega something. And it was just, it was the competitor to Mega um, uh, Mean Machines. You know, again, we always remember this one because this was the one which came out, I think it was once every two months, whereas Mean Machines came out once every month. But me the Mega Mag, or Mega whatever it's called, it had thousands of cheats in it. Thousands upon thousands of cheats, whereas Mean Machines had like two pages. The Mega Mag had like about 20 odd pages of cheats. <laughs> And bear in mind now, right, I don't like cheating at games, right, but 
these games, we'd play them and we'd complete them, or the ones we could. Uh, but then, you know, we'd want to like go through it again or find secrets like like Sonic 2, for example, where how to get to the, uh, what was it, Yellow Sonic, Super Sonic, wherever his name is. Um, you know, Level Celeste. We, we used to love that shit. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and it was just certain games you just couldn't complete for whatever reason. And you had to have Level Celeste. So it was cheating. But it's not like today where if you cheat, you can get a better weapon online and, you know, you're banned off bloody online and your life is over because you no longer can't play that game. But these ones, it was just fun and games. It was literally fun and games. Before video games got serious as like it is today. Like I said, although I eventually owned a Super Nintendo, this was, f my opinion, better, the better console. Doesn't matter about power or not, I think it just had the better games. Uh, it had the best memories for me. And I still prefer this version to the Mega Drive 2 version. To this version, which don't get me wrong, I like this version. This is the one that came out, I think it was like two or three years later. And I don't know, I, th I just think... <laughs> I just think this one's way sexier. Even though you can see the sticker marks on this now, but you know... I just think that's the better, the better version for us, mate. It just looks better. Again, maybe it's because it's the first one I owned, I don't know. I think it looks better, way better. <laughs> but yeah, um, that is my pretty much all I can say about my memories of the Sega Mega Drive, to be honest with you. Still, and I've said this before, 16-bit era is still my favorite era in video games. I like I like video games now, don't get me wrong, but 16-bit, there's just something about it. Maybe because I was 11 or 12 years old at the time the Mega Drive came out. And for me, it was the heyday of video games. Not just consoles, but in arcades. Late 80s, early 90s. You, we'll never get those, <laughs> we'll never get those years back, unfortunately, when it comes to video games. It's, and it's not the nostalgia, well, it's half nostalgia, but I personally, and I think people my age will agree with me, I think. I think video games had more passion in them, more thought, and just overall, Better games. Most of them, not all of them. But yeah, I got excellent memories of the Sega Mega Drive. And I wish I knew what happened to mine. I can't remember. <laughs> but anyway, um, I've been rambling on again for a bit too long. But yeah, that's my memories of the Sega Mega Drive. Um, did you own that console? Did you like that console? Do you agree with me? What were your favourite games and what, you know, did you own the Super Nintendo and always think, I want to see a Mega Drive? <laughs> but anyway, I hope you've enjoyed. And like I said, those games I've showed you, I, I recommend every single one of them. King's Bounty especially, Alien 3, Mortal Kombat 2. Play them all. They're excellent games. And if, if, you're like, if you're from the younger generation who just like games now like Call of Duty and what have you, that's, that's up to you, that's fine. But... If you get the chance, go go on, you know, tr try old 16-bit games, 8-bit games from the 90s and late 80s. Best time of your lives. Anyway, I'm going. I hope you've enjoyed. I've enjoyed going back down memory lane with my Sega Mega Drive. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Bye for now.